earlier. No, there are no balls, only game pad four. <laughs> Get up to speed and transform your gaming experience with Blue Yonder Broadband Internet. I'm Violet Berlin and you're watching Gamepad. Warning, content may be hot. Coming up in today's show, a game that's a national obsession, something for speed freaks and girls with aggression. Buffy's one of them, although in the latest Slayer game, she shows her strength by stepping aside now and then to give her mates a go with the pointy stick. We'll also have a Lara Lara laughs with the Tomb Raider chick. The fans that are here today are very excited to meet Lara. They're actually quite intimidated by her because she's six foot three in those boots um, and quite scary with the guns as well. Scary with the guns? We'll show you proper scary with the guns in our crash course. You can just let it rip and it will shoot absolutely everywhere like that. But first, Star Wars. There have been at least 65 different Star Wars games made to date. To be honest, I got fed up with counting. But what is the current state of play in the galaxy far, far away? Gamepad shed some light sabers on the subject. First up, Jedi Academy. From the people who bought you Wookiee School and Droid on Campus. Nah, if only. Actually, Jedi Academy is simply the latest in the Jedi Knight series. This time you are no longer forced to play the most irritating character in the galaxy, Kyle Katarn, but get to be a Jedi yourself. However, according to respected games journalist Dave McCarthy, the Force is much stronger elsewhere. I think the best games are both good games in their own right and do justice to the license or at least kind of operate on the periphery of the license so they don't really damage it. And the one I'm playing at the moment, Knights of the Old Republic, is also a magnificent role-playing game and it happens to be set in the Star Wars universe. Star Wars Galaxies, on the other hand, isn't just set in the Star Wars universe, it is the Star Wars universe, recreated over the net. Paul Presley from PC Zone. There have always been a lot of Star Wars games ever since there have been Star Wars films, but this is the first time that it's been in an online environment, so the Star Wars Galaxies is a huge interest in people playing as uh, Star Wars characters in a great big online environment. The Rogue Squadron series, I think, started off reasonably well with the first instalment on the N64. What is thy bidding, my master? Obviously the next one looks graphically nice, um, but I'm dubious about their ability to, to implement good level design, so I'm not waiting with anticipation. I think they're all decent enough games, but they're not the Star Wars second coming that the American press seemed to think it was around the time of the GameCube launch. As long as there are Star Wars films, there are always going to be Star Wars games. Where they're going to end, we don't know, but the next one is going to a game called Republic Commando, and that looks like it's going to be huge. Yep, no matter how many Star Wars games there are, the next big recreation will be just around the corner, waiting to be discovered. Korea has got the biggest number of high-speed internet users in the world, 
so it's hardly surprising that the entire country is crazy about online games. And the one game that the entire country is loopy, nutty, doo 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 about is called Lineage, making it the most popular game of its kind in the world. So watch out, South Korea. Here comes Lineage 2. It's hard to believe that a mystical kingdom like this could lead to addiction and crime, but that's exactly what the series has been accused of. Lead designer Rao Kim tells us about this sequel's lineage. It's the uh, age of chaos, and the kings uh, try to conquer the world. Besides uh, beautiful 3D graphics, we have a realistic uh, castle warfare. In a typical castle siege, uh, you can ride a dragon and fly into the enemy's castle, or you can be a summoner and summon huge creatures to break down castle wall. Players want to ride something, uh, so we make two types of dragons. Uh, one type uh, you can ride and fly with. Uh, the other type you can ride and run very fast and they will uh, fight with you. And I hope the players uh, can feel they are kings and queens. And of course, they can be. There is no other game like this. Uh, we want to give you the different experience. Be the king, rule the world. Gamepad. Next, Buffy, the TV series may be over, but the video game franchise has only just got started. Back with the pointy sticks and the equally sharp wit, it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Chaos Bleeds. Buffy's back, and this time to help her out, so are a few of the other Scoobies, namely the witch Willow, the cool vampire Spike, the bad slayer Faith, the normal bloke Xander, and also as it happens a weird talking ventriloquist dummy who appeared in one episode back in series one. Bizarre. Anyway, all the ingredients are here for an authentic adventure. There's a story that's been written by sanctioned Buffy comic book writers. That takes care of the power. Time to tackle that fence. Voice recordings from cast members. Uh. Uh. Puzzle solving. Pointy sticks. And lots of vampires to turn to dust. Hello there. The different characters are all supposed to have different abilities, like Willow here and her projectile magical attacks. However, they all feel pretty much the same to play with. It does help break up the kick, kick, big kick, lunge, hit, 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 slap, hit, stab, stab, slap to the back of the head, real repeat to fade action though. We're massive fans of the TV series, but this game feels as soulless as the vamp who are dusting. Don't get me wrong, the beating up bit was generally pretty good fun. No, it was really good fun. A right laugh, even! 
but it's not really enough, and just got rather... I was wielding chaos magic before you were even born. Repetitive. I was wielding chaos magic before you were even born. Still, trivia fans, here's the question. Is this the first video game with a lesbian subtext? I, I messed up my shoulder. I, I, I think I'll be all right. But you're gonna have it looked at. Unfortunately, though, unlike the brilliant TV show, the stakes aren't the only thing that are a bit wooden round here. Hello there, I'm Sean Lloyd, and when I'm not forecasting the weather, I'm avidly watching Gamepad. This is Gamepad 4. Four's the magic number, not three. This montage is from a game based on a popular science fiction series. One of the most popular around, in fact. Even if you hate sci-fi, you'll probably have seen it on telly. So, what is it? See if you're right after the break. Get up to speed and transform your gaming experience with Blue Yonder Broadband Internet. Welcome back to Gamepad. Before the break, we asked if you could identify the science fiction series that this game is based on. Look, Borg! And if there are Borg, it must be Star Trek. Yes, I know, all Wimbledon in the 1970s. But this is definitely Star Trek. Star Trek Elite Force 2. Who is Lara Croft? She started off life as a blocky games character, but now she's a franchise. Angelina Jolie plays her in the movies, and then over the years a number of different long-legged models have put on the pigtails and holsters so she can appear in the flesh to her fans. Gamepad went on a hot date with the latest Lara. Hi, I'm Jill Young, and today I'll be Lara Croft. Take one Dutch model with a heavy accent, Stick on a cloak and a pair of those sunglasses you get in Camden Market, and what do you know? It's Lara Bloomin' Croft! My agency phoned me one day and they were asking me if I wanted to come over to London because um, IDOTS uh, came to the agency to, you know, to see some girls they wanted to have a model for the position of Lara Croft. There's lots of photo shootings and press involved. Um, and they found a picture of me in profile, my, um, so, and my cheekbones and my like, nose were quite similar to Lara's. Yeah, I had to do my li you know, little performance and I had to meet the buttons, and they choose me eventually. Every day it's quite different again. Sometimes we've got like um, camera crew following me all day. Then we've got like um, lots of fans coming over. The fans that are here today are uh, very excited to meet Lara. They're actually quite intimidated by her because she's six foot three in those boots um, and quite scary with the guns as well. And also because she's so incredibly beautiful. 
We've got very exciting day ahead still. Uh, once we've finished up here, uh, we're going to jump back in the Jeep. We're going to head down to the London Eye. Um, well, I'm looking forward to my first trip in the London Eye. I'm just going to go there um, to meet a fan or a competition winner again, actually. My wife entered the competition and I had no expectations of winning it. And then we received a phone call during the week and then all of a sudden I'm here. And um, I thought it would be quite awkward and rigid, really, but it was far more pleasant than I expected. And she was pretty cool. Fancy entering him in a Winner Lara competition when she was down Woolies. What a nice wife. My ideal guy? Mm-hmm. You know, he must be quite um, confident, uh, athletic, you know, like uh, adventurous, ready. You know, he, he, he needs to surprise me. He, he kind of guy that is crazy. Um, yeah. And then about the looks, he would, you know, like tall men. They seem to be getting on really well. Ever since we got on the uh, on, on the on the eye, they've been chatting, getting on really well. Um, she's a little bit taller than him, so uh, I'm not sure. She, I think she was looking for quite a tall man herself. Um, but he's got a lot of character, and I think the spirit is what she's really after. So fingers crossed for Lara. Maybe she's found her man. She may have found him, but she's not going to keep him. Michael has gone back to his lovely wife and soon Gilda Young will have to go back to being just another ordinary six foot three Dutch supermodel. The Lara Croft franchise, meanwhile, will get a new face and, as usual, next year's model will do its best to look exactly like this one. Gamepad's got a website, you know. Why not come and visit us? There are plenty of those big man racing games around, but you shouldn't disregard the fun to be had from those mini racing games. I suppose the video game equivalent of go-karts. So today, Gamepad charts its essential top three. At number three in our chart of cutesy races, Kirby's Air Ride on the GameCube. No cute chart would be complete without little pink blobby Kirby. Despite the fact that these tracks look perilously narrow and steeply banked, it's got a simple one-button control system designed for single or multiplayer pick-up and playability. Kirby shows that one is fun. Twice as cute at number two, it's Mario Kart Double Dash, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. This time each player controls two of Nintendo's famous sickly sweet characters, one to drive and one to use power-ups. You can race in one kart with a friend and when you want, you can switch positions. With Double Dash, you know that two can do. But at number one in our chart of cutesy race games, it's Sonic Heroes. With three members on each race team, it's three times as cute. Obviously. Pairing through the levels, you control one character at a time, with the others following along behind. Then, just switch when you reach the point where you need the skills of another team member. Yep, winning the race every time. It's gotta be. The Menage a Trois. Hi, my name is Fred, and when I'm not watching Gamepad, I'm handling knobs and knockers all day. Big Jim Cottle is a qualified games player and has appeared on three series of Gamepad now. But despite his almost celebrity status, he's not afraid to send himself up.
This week, I've been playing mostly Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter. I'm going to take you through some of the uh, some of the myriad of weapons available to you. Okay, the first one here, that's the shotgun. You can get actually four rounds at the chamber, which is quite useful for doing things like that. Um, you've also got a handy sniper rifle, which is great for picking off people at a distance if they present themselves, like him. Then you've got time mines, which can be a lot of fun. And this is a, an alien weapon I picked up earlier. Um, shoot around corners, like that. But in this case, you can charge it up, leg it around, and let him have it. Mace Griffin differs from a, a lot of first persons where you can switch on a sort of auto lock feature. Um, if you do use the target lock, it's probably best with a midi gun. Although be careful, because if you don't shoot in sort of controlled bursts like that, you can just let it rip and it will shoot absolutely everywhere like that. So be careful. The other thing to be careful of is when you've got the target lock on, once you've killed them, to take it off because you will just keep shooting at a dead body, uh, which means you're going to be open to attack from everybody else. Okay, we're going to go into the hangar, which is where my ship is docked. Here we go. Someone's used a, a phosphorus grenade on me there, which is very clever of them. Time to go to the trusty shotgun again. Put two in and say goodnight to him. And I should be able to board my ship and take off. Here we go. Into the cockpit. And we're off. And let him have it with the deck gun as I leave. But if you stick to those tips, you'll end up more like Boba Fett than Colt Seavers. Next time on Gamepad, Surviving in the jungle. You don't have a lot going for you. You're outnumbered and they have all the good guns. The jungle is your friend. Try to stay off the paths and use the jungle to keep you in. And the relationship between video games and pinball. Pinball Jeff points it up. So not the same as the video game that you were talking about, but it did its job for a while since the 30s. I'm going to show you some tips on how you can be the fastest racer on what is the most ridiculously fast racer ever. And a crash course in futuristic hover car racing, what every man needs. I'm Violet Berlin, you've been watching Gamepad. Remember, robots are our servants, not our slaves. I'll leave you now with some eye candy. Where are you going? You might have noticed here on Gamepad we're Robo Crazy and we want you to be too. It's Custom Robo. See you next time. Seven tonight, Sydney Bristow hides in the shadows of her spooky job, which nobody's really sure about, in Alias. Later at 10, street hypnosis cuts off its nose to spite its face. But after the break now on Bravo, long drives are like being stranded in the desert. Delusions plague our dreams. Ask Hasselhoff, Knight Rider.